Of all the many fascinating groups of dinosaurs, perhaps none are as strange as the Therizinosaurs, although there are some close contenders. The history of research on this grouping of bizarre, fluffy, likely herbivorous theropods is one that stretches back decades and is filled with uncertainty. These creatures were so strange that for a long time paleontologists just didn't know what they were. Now we have a better understanding of Therizinosaurs, and thanks to amazing discoveries from across the world we can begin to learn what these beasts were like, how they evolved, and how they're all related to other dinosaurs. The anatomical features of the Therizinosaurs have caused a great deal of confusion to researchers in the past, as the overall morphology of the general Therizinosaur body plan is highly unusual, and yet individual parts of the skeleton resemble various other dinosaur lineages in certain ways. Many members of this group possessed the elongated necks, relatively small heads, large bodies and layout of the hind feet of early sauropodomorphs, but while also displaying features that were similar to the Ornithischian dinosaurs, such as the way their hip bones were constructed, being remarkably broad and having a pubis and ischium that point backwards, and their beaked jaws. As a result of this strange anatomy, the Therizinosaurs, or Segnosaurs as they used to be called, have been classified in all kinds of different positions amongst dinosaurs, but today we now know that they were theropod dinosaurs, related to animals such as oviraptorosaurs, dromaeosaurs, and alvarezsaurs. So how did paleontologists determine what therizinosaurs were? Figuring out how these animals evolved has been a complicated task. The first therizinosaur to be named and described was Therizinosaurus itself in 1954. However, initially it was not thought to be a dinosaur at all, but instead some sort of giant turtle-like creature with enormous claws, which explains its species name, Celoniformis, meaning turtle-like. The claws of this animal were the first parts to be discovered, and would likely have measured about a metre long in life when a sheath would have been present. In this same description, the family name Therizinosauridae was also coined. It was only in 1970 that other paleontologists realised the creature these claws belonged to was not a turtle, but actually a dinosaur. However, in 1979, a paper was published by a Mongolian paleontologist, Oltangerel Pearl, who recognised that the fossilised remains of a dinosaur discovered in Lower Cretaceous rocks in Mongolia was probably an example of a previously unknown family. He named the animal Segnosaurus and created the family Segnosauridae to contain it. The fossil remains of Segnosaurus that led to this naming included the lower jaws, parts of the fore and hind limbs, bits of ribs, many vertebrae and an almost intact pelvis, enabling the paleontologist to determine a decent amount of the organism's anatomy. Pearl noticed how the limb bones of its hind legs appeared very well suited to supporting the large body weight of a slow-moving creature, and how the rear feet were not theropod-like at all, as theropods have highly reduced first toes. Instead, Segnosaurus had a first toe that would have touched the ground in life. In this initial description, as well as in later papers written with another paleontologist, Rinchen Barsbold, Pearl recognised that Segnosaurus was, despite displaying anatomical features that appear to converge with sauropodomorphs and some ornithischians, actually a theropod, as could be seen when its skeleton was analysed in detail. However, Pearl also distinguished this new Segnosauridae family from Therizinosauridae, which at that time was now known to be a dinosaur family, pointing out differences in the length of the claws in both dinosaurs, as well as the morphology of the arm bones, but as we'll see, the groups would later become merged. A larger taxonomic grouping was then named by the paleontologists in 1980, Segnosauria, to contain the Segnosauridae family, and another genus of Segnosaur was described, Erlichosaurus. A third Segnosaur genus was then named by the researchers in 1983, Enigmasaurus, and given its own family within Segnosauridae. Despite still maintaining that Segnosaurs should be classified as theropods, Barsbold did note that the anatomy of the group was incredibly unusual and that the evolution of the lineage was unique among these dinosaurs. Other paleontologists then also began to doubt the established position of the Segnosaurians as theropods, and throughout the rest of the 80s and the early 90s, a variety of alternative placements were suggested for them. One of these, favoured by Gregory Poole, proposed that since they apparently lacked any distinctive theropod-like characteristics, there was no real reason for them to be assigned to the group, and instead they showed many Ornithischian-like features, such as the beaked jaws. As a result of this, it was suggested that Segnosaurs were a kind of phylogenetic intermediary between prosauropods, an outdated term for platyosaurid-like sauropodomorph dinosaurs, and ornithischians, which were at this time believed by some to have evolved from prosauropods. Some other later studies by different paleontologists also found support for Segnosaurs being prosauropods, and still others found them to be somewhere within saurischians, one of the major dinosaur groupings, but in an unknown position. It was then in the early 90s that an understanding about Segnosaurs and Therizinosaurs, which is more reflective of our modern view, began to emerge. 
The discovery and naming of the Chinese taxon Alxosaurus in 1993 led the paleontologists who described it to realize that its anatomy was both similar in ways to Cygnosauridae and to Therizinosauridae, and as such they proposed that these groupings are actually the same thing. So Therizinosauridae took priority as it was named first, and Cygnosauria and Cygnosauridae are no longer in use. In addition, the largest superfamily of Therizinosauroidea was named, which included Alxosaurus plus the family Therizinosauridae. Most later studies from the 90s continued to agree that Therizinosaurs were likely a group of unusual theropods, and the 1999 description of Beipiaosaurus solidified this further. This taxon, found in China, was placed as a basal Therizinosauroid, and provided more evidence that these dinosaurs were true theropods within Coelurosauria that had just convergently evolved sauropodomorph and ornithischian-like characteristics. And not only that, but the Beipiaosaurus specimen also preserved the fossilized remains of feather-like structures, indicating that many Therizinosaurs would probably have possessed a coat of downy feather integument in life. So thanks to the remarkable findings of more Therizinosaur fossils, the relationships of these bizarre animals started to clear up. The early 2000s also brought more amazing discoveries of new Therizinosaurs, such as the 2001 naming and description of the genus Nothronychus, the first Therizinosaur to be found in North America, and then later in 2005, Falcarius, a very early basal Therizinosaur from Utah that enabled paleontologists to get a much better understanding of the group's origins and evolution early on in the lineage's existence. After decades of contradicting views then, where do we stand today? Well, at the moment it seems the classification of Therizinosaurs is relatively stable in a position placing them as Maniraptorans, being more derived than the Alvarez sauroids, but more basal than Oviraptorosauria and the Paraves. However, there is always a chance that the classification of these dinosaurs could alter again with future studies, as they're still not represented by the best fossil material, and there are a lot of unknowns yet to be discovered in this group. But the more recent findings of relatively complete, very basal and derived Therizinosaurs does now allow us to paint a rough picture of the evolution of these most wonderful dinosaurs. The basal Therizinosaurs include genera such as Falcarius, Giangchangosaurus, Baipiaosaurus, Alxosaurus, and possibly Martharaptor. Depending on which study's terminology you go by, they're either all non-Therizinosaurid Therizinosauroids, or some are Therizinosaurs while others are Therizinosauroids. And yes, the family, superfamily, and infraorder names get a bit annoyingly confusing sometimes. These more basal Therizinosaurs generally tend to show anatomies that resemble features seen in their non Therizinosaur Maniraptoran relatives. However, they do also display adaptations that hint at the later specialization of Therizinosaurs to an omnivorous or herbivorous lifestyle. Falcarius is a good example of this, as it has a pubis that points forwards, running adapted hind limbs, a reduced first toe that didn't contact the ground, and teeth in the front of the jaws, features common to other extinct Maniraptorans, but while also having an elongated neck and showing adaptations for herbivory. Then a 2006 study of the arms of Falcarius noted that this taxon and most of the early Therizinosaurs still possess quite slender and elongate pectoral girdles and forelimbs similar to the predatory dinosaurs they evolved from. But the study also realized that several changes in the anatomy of these parts of the dinosaurs could already be recognized in these basal members, including an increasing robusticity of the forelimbs and pectoral girdle, and an increasing flexibility of the wrist. The more derived Therizinosaurs, taxa such as Segnosaurus, Erlichosaurus, Nothronychus, and Therizinosaurus itself, were capable of growing to incredibly large sizes, with Therizinosaurus, the biggest of them all, estimated at a length of 9 meters, or 30 feet, and about 4.5 tons in weight. These later species show more specialized adaptations to their unique lifestyle amongst prehistoric theropods as probable herbivores, though it's possible that they were omnivorous too, perhaps occasionally feeding on small animals, like many traditionally herbivorous organisms actually do. The characteristic traits of the derived Therizinosaurs include many very small leaf-shaped cheek teeth, the development of a beak at the end of their rostra, the very broad pelvis indicating a remarkably broad abdomen, and therefore a large space for the gut, and of course the recovered functionality of the first digit and adaptation of the hind limbs for weight-bearing instead of running. The famous giant claws of Therizinosaurs have been proposed to potentially be used for pulling down branches of vegetation and allowing the dinosaurs to feed on higher growing foliage, or also as defensive structures to protect the animals from other hypercarnivorous theropods they shared their habitats with. So Therizinosaur evolution took these beasts from more typical, meat-eating, fast-moving theropods to large, big-bellied, almost panda or ground sloth-like foragers with huge claws that could be used as tools or deadly weapons. 
they're truly one of the most fascinating of all dinosaur groups, which is saying something. And the story of their discovery and the eventual realisation of what they are is a brilliant example of scientific progress and the development of our understanding of prehistoric life. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video on my favourite group of dinosaurs, and I hope you learned something new. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters too, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters George Vogtek, Dominic Bathy, Darkerot, and Nicole Bueno. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.